Hands down, in my opinion, round shaders are probably the best needle for any beginner tattoo artist to begin practicing with. This is going to be a 5, 7, 9, 11, 14, and 18 round shader. If we are just starting out, let's say this is our first three months of practice, let's remove the 11, 14, and 18 put those over to the side. This right here is the safest spot for a brand new beginner tattoo artist to start with. The needles aren't too thin in line weight and they aren't too heavy. They're right in the middle so they should be more manageable to work with and again especially if these are our first few months. In my opinion what makes round shaders a better option for beginner tattoo artists to start with are the design of round shaders. So for example in comparison to round liners round shader groupings are going to be spaced further apart so each individual pin is going to have space in between it producing a bolder result where round liners the pins are typically tighter grouped together which is going to produce a tighter needle so if we take a five round shader versus a five round liner you're going to notice that the five round liner grouping is going to be much tighter in appearance than the five round shader and that is because of the spacing that i'm talking about in between each individual needle pin i feel like this is a great example of the spacing that i'm talking about in between each individual needle. So on the left we have a round shader and on the right we have a round liner. Both of these needles have 14 pins to make up one needle however they are just configured differently. You can see the round liner on the right is much tighter than the round shader on the left which means to me that the round liner is going to be much easier to break open the skin and deposit ink than it is going to be for the round shader to do so. Early on in our tattooing careers we want to avoid damaging even our fake skins. We want to get comfortable and acquainted with the absolute basics and kind of just even get an understanding as to how needles work and deposit ink. So in this journey, in this phase, in this part of our tattooing journey, I would recommend to shift to a round shader where we can see what we're doing a little bit more than we can with a round liner. This minor adjustment between needle pins really does make all the difference when we tattoo. With round shaders, our lines tend to be more forgiving. The smaller we go in line weight, the more our wobbles and mistakes are going to show up. With round shaders, we can get away with wobbles a lot more than we can with smaller configurations, let alone with round liners. Not only are round shaders more forgiving to mistakes, round shaders can also be a bit more easier to manage and cause less trauma to the skin. So let's say if a tattoo artist is naturally heavy handed, a round shader can kind of help them see where they are heavy handed and help them adjust accordingly and vice versa. A round shader can also help you see if you're not going deep enough because a round shader is going to leave a reiki sort of appearance to your line due to the spacing in between each individual pin. When used correctly, round shaders can cause less trauma to the skin we are working on. They are more forgiving to our mistakes, which is ideal for beginners. And overall, I feel like round shaders are better for educational and developmental purposes in the early days of our tattooing journey. The ultimate takeaway here is to not go too high in the needle range and not go too low. You want to stay somewhere between 5, 7, and 9 round shaders. When we are just starting out as beginners, we're not familiar with needle depth or hand speed to voltage or anything like that. So here I have a five round liner. If we were just starting out with these sort of smaller needle configurations, let's say we're also using a very high voltage, then that's where a lot of mishaps will happen and a lot of unwanted adversities, as I mentioned, trauma to the skin, blowouts. So for example, here is a five round liner to kind of break through the skin is super easy. As you can kind of see, it's effortless. I don't have to try. So as a beginner, I'm probably more than likely going to drive the needle into the skin as I'm doing here, but this is essentially slicing the skin. Like this is an actual, you know, wound, something that people may need even need stitches for. But you can see though, that if I wipe away, the needle not only slides through the skin, but as I move the face skin, it went all the way through. So smaller needle configurations are much, much easier to break open the skin and penetrate the skin. And you can see that this fake skin right here, it's a piece of real skin. And this one is a pretty thick piece of skin. We should be acquainted and know and understand needles before we jump to this small of a needle configuration. This is going to apply to most needles that are on the smaller range. I would say everything below like a seven round liner, maybe, maybe even a nine round liner if we're just starting out. 
So I took my voltage up to seven volts. I'm gonna kind of repeat this one more time with the five round liner. So oftentimes as beginner, we are getting comfortable with the voltage and our gear. What I used to do is I used to kind of line like this and I would just literally just drive it in there. Didn't know about hand speeds of voltage, didn't know anything about needle depth or anything like that. This right here did immense damage. Not only did it go all the way through as you can see, but if we take a look at the face skin, the face skin itself is completely sliced. This is exactly what we don't want from our face skins right here. This is also exactly what we don't want from human skin. So avoiding this early on can be as simple as picking a heavier line weight and staying away from one round liners, three round liners, five round liners, and maybe even seven round liners if we are just starting out. Let's say I switch over to, for example, a nine round shader. Now I'm not as prone to blowing out, scarring, slicing or causing unwanted trauma to the skin the needle is a bit more tougher to break open the skin which early on in our tattooing career isn't necessarily a bad thing it could be a good thing so using a round shader as you can see if i don't go deep enough i'm going to see each individual needle streak if i don't have adequate ink flow i'm going to be able to see that i'm going to be able to see all of those fundamentals that i need to establish early on using a round shader so as you can see right here, I didn't go nearly as deep as I should have. Allow me to continue this line here. So I can kind of demonstrate that sort of Reiki appearance. For me, this is invaluable information. This is information that I would want and need early on, especially if I'm uh, serious about tattooing and I really want to develop my skill sets. The best place to begin is mastering and learning lining. This is that Reiki appearance that I've mentioned in this video here. I was using a nine round shader. I wasn't adequate with my hand speed or my voltage or my needle depth. And you can see that I'm able to see each individual needle streak right there. Not only that, I don't have any sort of solid saturation or any sort of consistency going throughout this line here. So you can see as a beginner, I'm able to see all of that information just from using a round shader. Whereas the three round liner, it's over here kind of looking like a seven round liner and a five round liner right there. There's not information that I can get from a round liner that I can from a round shader. This is very important, especially when we are just starting out. Not only that, but if we take a look at the lines, the line that was done with the three round liner, all of the mistakes and wobbles stand out a lot more than the line that was done with the nine round shader. The wobbles are more hidden within the nine round shader line. Granted, it's not like any serious lining or they're not the same length. However, at the beginning, we can still see the wobbles more on the three round liner than the nine round shader. We are able to get away with a little bit more using a round shader as they are a bit more forgiving. You'll also notice when I'm using the round shader that it's not slicing through the skin or anything like that. It's not blowing this out either. Even if I were to drive it in there, it's going to take a tremendous amount of force and I'm going to have to go really slow in order for me to make it through this entire fake skin with this round shader. So allow me to try to demonstrate that here. So I have to move that slow and then really drive it in there in order for me to break through this fake skin. There is a tremendous amount of more force that is applied using this round shader. Again, that just goes back to the smaller the needle configuration, the easier it is for that needle to break open and penetrate the skin. You can see that my skin is also bouncing around a lot. I haven't held it down or anything, so that way you can kind of see it from that angle there. But even though I did that, we can see the wobbles aren't necessarily as pronounced as the ones with the three round liner, although they are there. I just feel like lines that wobble with a smaller needle configuration stand out a lot more than the lines that are done with a heavier line weight. For these reasons alone, I recommend to any beginner tattoo artist to start off with a round shader, especially like if you're not in the stages of tattooing yet, I would highly recommend to start with a round shader. If I had to pick a needle size, I would say maybe start with like a seven round shader or a nine round shader, anywhere between a seven to a nine, you should be okay, preferably maybe a seven. Start with the seven round shader, uh, develop some sort of rapport with it, 
and then kind of work your way on up to like a nine round shader. The reason why I would recommend seven and nine round shaders to any tattoo artist who's starting their tattooing journey is because not only are they prone to causing less trauma to the skin, they are more forgiving with our mistakes and they give us more information to help our development. Those reasons alone are more than enough for me to begin my journey using a round shader. So if a beginner tattoo artist asks me what needle I'd recommend them to start out with, I would definitely say as of today, either a seven or a nine round shader needle of any brand. Brand is personal preference, but in terms of configuration, that's kind of standard. For those that are serious about their progression and development could get a setup like this. This right here is a tattooing workbook that I created called the Tattoo Journal Volume 1 Basic Lining Exercises. This is a tattooing workbook that's designed to help us advance with lining. As you can see, there's loads of various basic lining exercises. This book is available on Amazon in which I will be leaving my Amazon affiliate links for you in the description below and other affiliate links for you in the description below to the gear featured in this video so that way you can check it out on your end. This is one of the many tattooing workbooks that I've developed over some time. There are an assortment of various tattooing workbooks that I have available. For example, I have the Tattoo Journal Volume 2. I have the Tattoo Journal Volume 3. There's also the Shading Journal Volume 1 which is available as well. There's also dot magic and each one of these tattooing workbooks specialize in something specific. I even have one called the facial feature guide. This one's designed to help us with facial features like hair textures, noses, eyes, lips, uh, mustaches, ears, you get the idea. This one's designed to help us with pointillism and accuracy. This one right here is for shading. These right here are a series of lining journals Part one is for basic, two is uh, medium, and then volume three is advanced with some shading introduction as well. And it doesn't stop there. I have books that specialize in floral. So this one's the Floral Guide Volume 2. I also have Volume 1, and this is specifically to help us better our floral designs there. I have another one called Print to Practice Volume 2 and Volume 1, which are hundreds of print-ready designs. We can go ahead and send them to a thermal printer or just put them right right through a thermal printer with the stencil paper. I also have a workbook for practicing vehicles. My point is to let you know that these tattooing workbooks are available to help aid and assist your development and progression. Links again will be in the description below. Right here, I have a ballpoint pen cartridge. This isn't necessarily a tattoo needle. However, I would say it's a definite cousin of the tattoo needle as it is still a cartridge with a ballpoint pen at the end of it, as you can see right here. This right here is a fantastic substitute to use in combination with these tattooing workbooks that I just showed. You. I typically pair these sort of ballpoint cartridges with a tattoo machine and then I practice. I love to pair and make the most out of my practice by using a tattoo machine to still develop within these workbooks. So if you are wanting to get the most out of your practice, you can definitely 110% positively use a tattoo machine to practice. This right here is also a fantastic place for any beginner tattoo artist to begin. This is a great place to conclude this video. However, should you have any questions at all, I encourage you to drop a comment down below. I'm going to do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring that bell for me as I'm going to be bringing more videos like this for you all. I do also have social medias under the same name as my YouTube. I have Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok all under Daniel Yuck. I would appreciate the support over there as well. With that being said, I appreciate you, your time, and your support. Thank you very much. You have a great day.